key ways that we stop the transmission of the COVID-19 virus is by wearing a face mask. But I'm interested to see that some people uh, have an exemption, a medical exemption for wearing a face mask, so they're not required to wear one. So it made me think, does wearing a face mask affect my breathing? Does it affect the oxygen saturation of my blood? Does it affect my heart rate? So I'm going to do an experiment, wearing a face mask at rest and also with exercise. And then I'm going to wear four face masks at rest and with exercise and see how that affects my heart rate and my oxygen saturation. Then I'm going to have a look at whether the mask actually affects the flow of air through the face mask as well. So let's get into it. So firstly I'm going to measure the distance away from my blowing source. I can move the, uh, the toy windmill to get it to first start to move without the mask and then with the mask. So this is without a mask. This is the distance all the way from here all the way over to here. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that distance. Seven point two meters. Okay, so now let's try and set it up with the uh, mask. Now it may be just starting to move at around about 10 centimetres. Whereas, without the mask, it was 7.2 metres. That's a massive difference. So there's no doubt that wearing a mask actually affects the flow of air. So does that actually affect the, um, the amount of oxygen in my blood? Does it affect my heart rate? That's what we're going to look at now. So I'm going to do my oxygen saturation at rest, first of all, without a mask. Then I'm going to put the mask on. So for the oxygen saturation, I'm going to use the uh, pulse oximeter. It also tells me my heart rate as well. Okay, and it says my pulse is 65 and my oxygen saturation is 96. So that's pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and put a mask on. I certainly know that it's making my glasses fog up. Perhaps I'm seeing a slight increase in heart rate. That's about 69 beats per minute. And the oxygen saturation is around about the same as it was before. Let's go ahead and put on a couple more masks and see what happens. All right, so I've been wearing four masks for around about two minutes now. Heart rate, around about 73. Oxygen saturation, still around about the same. All right, let's see what happens with exercise. What I need to do first, excuse me, what I need to do first is see what happens to my heart rate and my oxygen saturation with exercise normally. And then we'll do it with the mask. Let's get those oxygen saturation and heart rate. As you can see, my heart rate is 103. My oxygen saturation is 98 now. It's actually gone up. All right, so my heart rate's got back down to my resting level, around about. So, time to put a mask on and do my star jumps again. 97 heart rate, 98 sat. My oxygen saturation has not decreased wearing the one mask. I'm working a bit harder to breathe, but it's not affecting my heart rate. It's no, my heart rate's no different. All right, let's try the four masks after I've recovered. Heart rate 104, oxygen sats 97. Oxygen sats, really no change. Heart rate maybe up a little bit. Work of breathing, 
working pretty hard to breathe. But not affecting my heart rate really, or my oxygen sats. So let's have a look at the science as why oxygen sats doesn't change. Perhaps there's something else happening that I can't measure. So the main thing I experienced was an increased work of breathing. What I mean by that is we actually need to use muscles to open up our chest cavity to, for the air to come in. There's more resistance there at the mouth and the nose to actually be able to suck the air in and to push it out. Sucking the air in requires muscles. The intercostal muscles are around the ribs and also the diaphragm. So the ribs have a U shape like this. When they're at rest, they're kind of down on an angle like this. And when we breathe in, the ribs are lifted up. And so it's a larger area. At the same time, the diaphragm, which is the muscle right down under here, pulls down. So air goes into the lungs when we open up this space by lifting the ribs up and pulling the diaphragm down. So that takes effort. It takes muscular work. And when there's more resistance here at the mouth and the nose, then there's a higher work of breathing. And that explains why the heart rate increases. So we see the oxygen saturation isn't changed. There's some research that says that the issue is that there's uh, an increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood can't remove that carbon dioxide. So we need to talk about why that's an issue. But of course, the other thing is this increased work of breathing really doesn't seem to affect the oxygen saturation, only a very small change to the heart rate in somebody who's relatively young and healthy. Now, somebody who has a respiratory disorder, asthma, um, emphysema, then that increased work of breathing might in fact be just too much for them. So let's talk about that science. Everyone knows that we need oxygen. You might not know why the body needs oxygen. And quite simply, it's because it's required to burn sugar in the cells to release energy. Here's the equation. Now this happens in every single cell in little organelles called mitochondria. They look like this, and they're called mitochondria. And these mitochondria, they're like the powerhouse of the cells. So they're like little power stations. And they are burning glucose, or burning sugar, in the presence of oxygen, and they are releasing water, carbon dioxide, but really importantly, they're releasing energy. That energy is required for every single metabolic process in the body. I want to briefly explain to you why the oxygen concentration in the blood didn't change uh, with the mask on. And that's because of this thing called the oxygen dissociation curve, which looks like that. Down the bottom here, we've got, this is basically like the amount of oxygen available to us in the environment. And this is the oxygen saturation. So that's what I was measuring. This curve is very important for us. Essentially what we're saying is that we don't need to have a tremendous amount of oxygen available in the environment to have a very steep increase in the amount of oxygen in the blood. How does that work? We have this stuff called haemoglobin and it is the carrier for oxygen. It picks the oxygen up and binds it in the blood, takes it to all of our cells. It's got a very high affinity for uh, oxygen. In other words, it likes to grab hold of oxygen. If oxygen's available, it's gonna grab hold of it and hold on to it. That's the reason why, when even when I was wearing four masks and doing star jumps, the amount of oxygen in the blood was still really high. So let's talk about what's happening with the carbon dioxide. Now that's not something that I could measure. Other scientists have done measurements uh, on the amount of carbon dioxide and they find that the, probably the biggest issue with the masks is retention of carbon dioxide. Now, so in other words, what's happening is that the, the carbon dioxide that's being breathed out isn't being fully uh, released into the environment and some of that carbon dioxide is being breathed back in. So it can potentially increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the blood. That's a condition 
called hypercapnia. Now, with hypercapnia, um, you can have symptoms like uh, shortness of breath. And the reason for that is because it's, it's carbon dioxide in the blood that gives us our drive to breathe. It's not low oxygen, it's actually high carbon dioxide. It can also make us dizzy, it can make us drowsy, and it can make us disorientated. Disoriented. Okay, so increased carbon dioxide in the blood is not fun. That perhaps is the reason why um, people uh, have an exemption, a medical exemption for having to wear a mask. While the oxygen concentration is not an issue, there may well be a, an issue with carbon dioxide. The other thing, of course, we found is that the work of breathing is increased. There's no doubt about that. So that may well be another reason why people have an exemption from having to wear a mask.